Does running dub build on your D project take too long? Do you wonder what is the compiler doing all that time? Well, in this video, we're going to find out by using LDC's time tracing feature. To follow along, you need LDC 1.32 or newer. It's not implemented in the DMD compiler yet, and this version has some new improvements that we're going to rely on. So let's get started. I'll first show how to use it on a simple D file, and afterwards we're going to look at an actual dub project. So what I have here is a toy example which I made deliberately slow to compile. First of all, there's a very inefficient calculation of the triangle number, which is 1 plus 2 plus 3 up until x, which it computes in a for loop, and then in the main function, it runs it at compile time with a static assert with a very high number. So this is going to run a lot of calculations during CTFE. Secondly, I have this terrible function just to increment an integer, which I'm calling at runtime, but analyzing this function body is going to take a while because it contains a switch statement with 10,000 generated cases. So let's go. I'm going to invoke the LDC compiler on our file and add that time trace switch, dash f time trace. So this took about a second to complete and it has generated this time trace file, which is a big JSON file with profiling results, which are not very easy to read in this form. But starting with the LDC 1.32 version I just mentioned, it comes with a tool to convert it to a more readable text format. So let's invoke that. Time trace to txt on our file. And now it output time trace.txt in a readable form. This shows how executing the compiler took about 1.2 seconds. And it is consisted of doing these chunks. These parts are of the front end, and then it did some code generation, which is done by the LLVM backend. And I'm going to focus on the front end parts for now. The blocks are labeled SEMA1, SEMA2, SEMA3, or CTFE. Now, if you're not a compiler developer, these terms don't mean much. But internally, semantic one is the stage of importing a module and looking at variable types, function signatures but not the function bodies yet. Semantic 2 looks at variable initializers and Semantic 3 looks at function bodies and code. So you can see in this case, Semantic 1 didn't take much time, but Semantic 3 of our increment function took 430 milliseconds because it contains such a big switch statement. And our main function took a while to semantically analyze because it did CTFE running our triangle number function at compile time with this large number. So it took about 630 milliseconds to compute that. So let's see if we can improve it. I'm going back to my code and replace the inefficient for loop with a simple calculation. And replace our increment with a sensible return x++. And run our commands again. Now, executing the compiler took only 42 milliseconds, and the semantic analysis is now so short that it doesn't even show up as a chunk anymore. So that is the basic idea. See what parts of your code the compiler spends the most time on, and try to make them easier to compile. But this was just a toy example that I created, which is very simple. How does this scale up to an actual DUP project? So here I opened a dub project, which happens to be the source code for dub itself, but that's not important. The point is, this could be your dub project with a bunch of D source files and a dub.sdl or dub.json file. So let's see how long this takes to compile now. So this took about seven seconds, which we want to improve. So let's profile the compile time with LDC. First, we need to add the f time trace flag again, this time in our dub file with the dflex directive. Additionally, we need to specify an output file because dub will run the compiler from a temporary folder and then LDC will output the trace file in that temporary folder. So I'm using the dollar package there variable so it will be placed along our files and I'll give it a name. Then as a post build command, I'm going to add time trace to txt, trace.json, and output it as trace.txt with the dash o flag. So now it's time to run dub again. 
Now this previous run was compiled with DMD, but these flags are only implemented in LDC. So I'm going to specify compiler is LDC2. And I'm going to add the parse flag just to ensure it really runs the compiler and doesn't look at its cache. And let's go. So this is going to take a lot longer because LDC is a lot slower at code generation. Two and a half minutes later, it's finally done. And we have our trace.txt file. But because it's such a big project, it's not very readable. It's so big and hard to see which parts take much time. So we're going to upgrade our trace viewer. So there's two trace viewers that I can recommend. First, there's the Tracy Profiler, an offline C++ program, which can display time traces. If you're on Windows, you can look at the releases and download a pre-compiled binary. And if you're on Linux, you might get it from a package manager, such as the Arch user repository, if you know how to install from that. Or you can build it yourself. You need to install libcapstone and then from profiler build unix. You can build the tool with this makefile right here. And then also, back in the root, you need to build the import chrome tool to convert the trace format to traces format. If you go to build Unix, there's a make file for that as well. So I have Tracy installed and I'm going to run Tracy import Chrome, trace.json, output it as trace.tracy or whatever you want to call it. Then run Tracy on that file. And now you can see the trace in a visual form. So up here, there's a timeline from left to right. And the wider these chunks are, the longer they take. You can click on a specific chunk to see the exact time and also the fully qualified name of the function and the source code location, which you can copy to the clipboard with this button. To scroll horizontally, drag with the right mouse button and to zoom, you use the scroll wheel. So now I'm zooming out and zooming in. And as you can see below here, there's a graph with the memory usage of the compiler over time which I'm going to ignore for now. So I like this viewer because it's blazing fast. It always runs at 60 frames per second. But if you have trouble installing this program, there's also a browser-based tool. In your web browser, go to ui.perfetto.dev and you'll get this web viewer very similar to Tracy. I'm going to click open trace file and select our trace.json. And here we get a similar view to Tracy. But to move around and zoom, you use the left mouse button to drag this window over here. You can move it left and right and move the boundaries to zoom on a specific area. So now let's read this trace and see if we can find some areas of improvement. The elephant in the room here is that code generation took very long with LDC, but it didn't with DMD, where building the whole thing took about 7 seconds. So the advice is use LDC for release builds and for debug builds use DMD for quick iteration times. But let's see if we can shave off something from DMD's 7 seconds. Because the good news is DMD and LDC use the same front end. So any front end time you shave off from this LDC trace will also be reflected in your DMD compile times. So in this trace we're looking for very wide zones and ways to make them shorter. For example, Importing the dub.compilers.compiler module leads to a lot of actions which take a lot of time, but it's looking very complex. So for now, I'm going to look at this infer version filters function. Let me zoom in on it quickly. So analyzing this function is dominated by two CTFE executions, which parse regular expressions at compile time, which in turn is dominated by the add value function. Looking at the source location of this zone, we can find it's part of Phobos, which I don't want to touch right now. So I'm going to keep it simple and see if we can avoid the regular expression parsing at compile time in the first place. The location of infer version filters is here. I'm going to copy it. And back in VS Code with Ctrl P, I can quickly navigate to it. So here is the function where I'm going to replace the compile time regex with a regular one. And right here we can see the comment says it's only a small compile time increase, but we just saw it was a decent chunk. 
So I'll replace this. And before I save it, let's see what the old build time was again. Oops, unrecognized switch. Um, back in dub.stl, let's add platform equals LDC to these commands. So the flags are not passed to DMD. Run again. So before, 7.1 seconds. Now I'm saving it. Running again. 6.6 seconds. So only changing three lines of code, we reduced our build time with half a second. Not bad. To see what it looks like in the trace, I've run dub build with LDC again. And this was in fur version filters before. Reopening the trace file. I can now barely find it. Oh, so it's right here. So that entire block of compile time, now gone. And if you keep doing this with large blocks, you might just bring it down to a few seconds. In your code, things will obviously be different. And changing your codes to compile faster is a whole topic on its own. But I'll give you three quick tips. Try moving function execution from CTFE to runtime, which is what we did by avoiding the CT regex. Replace template parameters with runtime parameters, especially if it doesn't have to be a template parameter and you only made it so because you thought it would generate better code. Chances are the LDC compiler might inline it and generate good code anyway. And finally, watch out for meta programming resulting in large function bodies with, for example, hundreds of block scopes, a switch statement with thousands of cases, which I showed in my toy example, parameter lists with hundreds of parameters, and other things like that. And that concludes this video. Hopefully it was helpful to you and have a nice day.